how you guys doing? Is this, is this on? I want you to know that God has a strategic plan for your life. In most cases, we got to understand that when we say that God has an exact plan for your life, your life must be backed up mathematically. Whenever you're going to build something and it's going to be correct, they take measurements. You have to hire someone that is a tent maker, someone that is a carpenter. So I want to tell you a story about a friend of mine. He's not a personal friend. I never met him. But in reading about him, his life taught me so much about mine. There was a young man. He was a Hebrew. His only crime at that time is that he was not born an Egyptian. And because he was a Hebrew, the king decided that his life had no value and he was worthless. I was astonished. I was very confused and I was hurt because how could a king who had children of his own declare that a child only at the age of three months had no value and sentence him to death. Never taking in consideration that God had a plan for, his, for that child's life. When I looked at the king, I kind of understood a little bit better because the king was the king of Egypt. And he was only concerned about his village. And then I began to realize that when people find that you have no value for them, they now declare you to have no value. When people declare that you are not worth something special to them, then they tag you with being worthless. This young man, he beat the odds. He grew up to be a strong young man whose name happened to become Moses. Something happened, happened at, in Moses' life. At the age of 40, he was shown that the village that he was trying to be a part of, that declared he had no value, was not the group of people or the village that God wanted him to be a part of. So at the age of 40, all that Moses went through, all of the pain, all of the frustration, the failures, the disappointments, folks turning their back on him. When he got past the people that was in his life that meant him no good, he met God. And God began to change his direction and send him to a village of people that were waiting for him. Now that change occurred when Moses was 80 years. In other words, Moses' life had meaning. And it took time for him to mature. When you're in the wrong village, they have no desire to pull out the best that's in you to make you better for somebody else. So I want to share something with you. I want to give you a revelation to something. Moses one day meets God. The one who opinion only matters about you. But Moses carried insecurity. You can look good and have a big smile on your face and still deal with inner in securities. So Moses, after having a relationship with God, he sees God and he asks God something crazy. He says, God, I want to see your face face to face because what I'm looking for is value. I want to look you in your eyes. And God said, Moses, no man can look me in my face and live. But what I'll do is I'll cover your eyes so you can see the back parts of me. And so when Moses saw the back parts of God, he begins to write from a man's perspective. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. 
And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. What Moses didn't understand was God was giving him the security that man and man and female are the greatest creatures, the greatest things that ever was created. Nothing is more valuable than you. Not your house, not your car, not your job, not your friends, not your husband. You are very important to God. Let me share it with you. Moses said on the second day that God separated the waters from the heavens which was above the waters. He said that God called that, that dome sky. The third day, Moses wrote and said that God put two great lights in the heavens. He called the greater the sun and the lesser the moon. The fourth day, he dealt with water. The fifth day, he dealt with fishes. The sixth day, he dealt with mankind. Now, God gave that to him that way because he wanted him to know that everything that I created was created for you. The, the house was created for you not to worship. The car was created for you to drive. These things were created for your enjoyment. What Moses didn't understand is that when God saw it and he said it is good, God understood the mathematics that went into it. Understand that God took the sun and he placed the sun 93 million miles. I mean, God made earth and God put earth 93 million miles for the, from the sun. If it was close as Mercury, it would be 840 degrees. We couldn't make it. If it was close as Venus, it would be 860 degrees. We couldn't live. So it had to be precisely 93 million miles from the sun. The Earth spins on its axle at the speed of 1,000 miles an hour. It's spinning. Then the earth is moving to orbit the sun at the speed of 66,659 miles per hour. It is tilted so that we can get light. And it tilts the other way during the winter months. And so what Moses could not understand the demographics of what God put into for me and you. The question is, why do we make problems and situations big when it's really small? Why do we make challenges big when it's really small? Here's what Moses would tell you today, is that in life, you're going to struggle. In my life, I came from a street corner. I would not say successful drug dealer, I would just say prosperous. Made plenty of money. Everybody don't make money. The enemy lied, made plenty of money. But I made plenty of money and became a millionaire doing it at the age of 17. At the age of 23, I met a young lady. I went to her school and I seen her who happened to be my wife today. And I let her go because there was nothing I can do for her at that time other than look good and sell her a dream because I was a drug dealer. When I got 44, I met the same woman, a successful now business owner, owning a janitorial company, owning contracts, helping other people get contracts. When I got to a certain age, God began to validate my life. I could have easily been killed at 18. I could have easily been wiped out at the age of 23, but there was some validation to my life, and the validation to my life was the experience and the time. If I could just make it to 30, if you can just make it to next month, if you can just make it, just make it till you meet the next person in your life. Can you just survive till you get out of this relationship? Because something is better. But while you're in it, everything in that relationship, everything in that village, everything in that community is there to kill you. 
It is there to smother you. It wants to kill you at that young age. Can you find the strength? Can you look at other people? Can you look at other people in other villages? Can you look at television shows? Can you, can you look at movies and find the strength to endure? Can you listen to other people's stories and testimonies to find the strength to make it to the next day? Not knowing tomorrow could very well be your change. Well, later on, when I read Moses' story, I looked at my story. I don't want to say owner, because I don't believe you really own anything here. I would just simply say that in my journey, I am the payer of rightly dividing the word of truth, broadcast worldwide ministry, radio talk show in Philadelphia on WDB. When I met my wife at the age of 40 something, my life began to change. The gifts that God had put in me began to become alive and to work in the right direction. My tech, com my tech comment is this, hang in there, don't give up. Trust God to connect you to the right village that is more so concerned about what's in you because we all have a, a responsibility to pull the best out of you. Thank you for your time.